Hi, Caesar here. Today we're going to go over how I use a pattern to scale to the correct size. Before I start a sculpture, I kind of determine what size do I want that to be. And the best way to do it and take the guessing game out of it is I create a pattern, my template if you will, to the actual size I'll be creating my armature. So you can see this here, uh, if I place it over my armature, it's more or less dead on as far as the size I was aiming for. And the video that follows will basically kind of show you the process I use to get it to that point. I use Photoshop. This is my method. I'm sure there's other ways of tweaking it. If the video was helpful in any way, by all means, click on the like button. Thank you. We want to go to uh, preferences, go to units and rulers, and you want to set your rulers here to inches. Next thing you want to do is go to the view and make sure snap is selected and also rulers. Now moving on to step two you want to determine what size do you want to scale this up to for instance right now it's currently at roughly mm, eight inches give or take so what i want to do is i want to take my guides so on the ruler side here just grab and pull and set it in front of the uh, head here that's your first guide your second guide you want to put towards his rear the base of the tail and let's blow this up to 24 inches for our example so what I want to do next is go to my ruler place your ruler there hold down the shift key and pull it to the right and right now I'm roughly at 6.7 inches so I need to increase it quite a bit so I'm going to go up here to my image go to the image file and let's just bump this up here quite a bit let's uh, let's say 30 30 inches and you can see I'm blowing it up quite a bit so let's take another measurement here hold down the shift key go down to the next guide and what I have here I'm at 20.30 so it's still a little too small so let's up it a bit so image let's move this up to uh, let's go 34 and see what that gives me We're at 23, so let's tweak it a bit more. Um, image size, let's go to 34.5. We're at 23.35. Let's go a little higher. Let's shoot straight to 35. Point four. We're at twenty three point nine six. That's actually I could stop there, but let's just tweak it a little more. Um Let's go five. Okay, we're at 24.03. Perfect. So the next thing I want to do is now we're going to move over to the rectangular marquee tool. So 
let's set our boundaries here let's put another guide right above the highest point and when we go to the rectangular marquee tool we're going to select fix size and since i'll be using my transparencies that are 11 by eight and a half let's do a 10 inches width and eight inches in height once those are set set your uh, marquee here you're going to grab your guides and move it to the first section there which is basically your first measurement it's from this point to this point is 10 inches i'm going to grab the top guide and place it on the bottom it should lock in place because you selected the snap if you recall you selected snap and you selected ruler so the snap would allow it to snap in place so the next thing i want to do is move this over well you can move it over and it'll just snap in place there so the next marquee you're going to go ahead and put your guide right on this one here and you're going to put your next one right here bring down the guide we're going to need one two three four five six seven eight let's correct that we're going to select click v as in victor on your keyboard and we're going to get rid of this guide you don't need it bring it far left so let's go to marquee one more time here and let's see where it falls in place perfect So in essence, what we could do is the following. So it'll fit within this here and kind of save on some transparency paper. It looks like I have some room right here. Slide it all the way to the right. Let's hit V as in Victor on your keyboard. And we're going to slide this as far as it goes here. more or less there all I'm interested is in this this box here this one this one this one this one this one and this one this one and this one I don't really care about the tusk here I could improvise here later or if you wanted to just go ahead and print this out here it doesn't really matter so the next thing you want to do is go back to your marquee it's selected already you got this layer selected here and you want to place it directly over your first rectangular marquee and you're gonna hit command C to copy it then you're gonna hit command and you can say okay and you're going to hit command V so this is number one let's leave it to the side here the next one is right here command C command and OK command V this is your next one let's move on to the next one here Command C, Command N, OK, Command V. Now this one here you could print if you want. I well for this example I'll go ahead and print it. Normally I won't because I could just improvise on that tip of the tusk. So Command C, Command N okay command v next section here command c command n okay command v
command C, command and, OK, command V. Now you could grab this and just drag it if you want, or you could use your uh, keyboard arrows and click till you get to that part. It takes a little too long for me, so therefore I'd rather just click here or just drag it. So Command C, Command N, OK, Command V. Next one, right down here to just click here and you have to grab it and place it here so command C command N command OK command V next one command C command N command OK command V And the last one, to move this here, what I'm doing, I'm using a pad, I'm not using the mouse, so I think what you would do here is basically left click and drag it, let me see, let me get this mouse, yeah, left click, then drag. So command C, command N, OK, command V. The next thing you want to do is get all your sections. And go to your printer. Uh, I'm using a Mac here, so the most part for, for me to print, I just hit command. P. I want to make sure I'm using horizontal so go with this one here you don't want to click on scale to fit media just whatever your measurements were here it's telling up on top it's 11 inches by five and a half inches I know my drawings are 10 inches by 8 inches so therefore I know by selecting this here it'll work and make sure you have centered you want to center it then you just say go ahead and print select your printer or whatever uh, hit print in my case I'm not going to print it right now since I printed them already and just make sure your transparency paper or transparency film is inside your printer next thing I'm going to go ahead and print out the sections instead of using uh, transparency film since I don't need it I'm going to print on regular paper so you kind of just show you the idea but in your case you might want to do transparency paper that way when you're working on your subject, you could take that transparency and flip it and it'll give you both a left and a right. So let's start with this one first. So Command P, let's make it horizontal, print, print. Let's get it to this one now. Command P. Here's horizontal, print, and this one, command P, make it horizontal, print, print, and this one, command P, horizontal, print, print. Command P, horizontal, print, print. Command P, horizontal, print, print. Let's print this one too, the task. Command P,
think that was the last one. I'm gonna use my flurry ladies out. That's what we have so far. I'm gonna go ahead and take scissors now or a straight cutter and just trim everything together and I'll show you how I put it together. Take your scissors or one of those edge cutters and follow your lines. Now, if you were using transparency film, you could get away with not cutting these off because you could just basically layer it on top of each other and you won't be able to see where the seams are located in. For the purpose of this here, it, it'll still be translucent enough for us to see our armature on the other side as we build it. So if, for instance, you do this here, you could just tape it from here. You don't have to cut this area here. And what I would do is kind of just take your scotch tape or transparency tape, whatever you want to call it, and just line it up. It doesn't have to be precise. You just are aiming for proportions to your sculpture. So I kind of just tack it in place here. And when everything's tacked in place, I come back with long strips of tape and make sure everything's nicely secured. So that part's down there. So let's put this one over this way. Cut this. I've done pieces like this up to six feet in height to get the right proportions for my subject. Now transparency film could get pricey depending where you buy it so I've bought some decent generic transparency uh, film on Amazon for this one here and see the tusk. And it's going to go right on this here. You'd be surprised how many times. I've done a sculpture only to take it apart because something wasn't right, my proportions, something was off. And to take the guessing game out of this here, I just started using these templates now. And keep in mind when you're doing it, you want to focus on the fore foreground, ignore the background. For instance, when I'm working on these here, I just focus on the front left of this here and when I want to work on the other side I just flip my transparency over and I get my right front right once it's flipped. So you get the idea this serves two purposes your left and right. And if you have access to the front and back of your subject you could you could do the same thing by scaling it up on that the left and right would be unknown however my height is known so once I get my height my left and right figure it will figure itself out it will fall into the correct ratio Now, if your template does not have obvious lines where to cut, you could basically create borders on there 
using Photoshop, and what I mean by borders, um, you select your image and you say, okay, I want a border around this here. It'll give the options in, middle, or outer. It doesn't matter, just go for the intersection and it'll create a border along the whole perimeter of this here and allow you to use it as a your cutting line. Now let's go ahead and cut the top part. And use whatever you have on hand. Sometimes I'll use um, this transparency tape here. Sometimes I'll use packing tape. As long as it's transparent, it'll work. And sometimes I don't cut on the edges here. If I'm using transparency paper, I just lay, lay them on top of each other and utilize the tape to put them, place them together. Since my templates are more or less a one-time use, after that I just discard them. Now, if anybody has a better way of doing this here, by all means let me know. Since I don't own a, a large size printer, one of those large formatted printers, I can't do that, do it that way, plus those are a little pricey. And again, I can't stress enough, it does not have to be 100% dead on. You're looking for proportion here. If I was off an inch here somewhere, the average person won't be able to tell. See right here, you can't tell where your lines are at, so basically just start, you can see your straight edge here, and just start from here and just work your way up to you get to the next one and then focus on that line. And it goes right here. And this should be the last one. Yeah, correction. 
And so what I would do from here on then is take some more tape and stretch it and just put it across all the connection part, connecting parts, um, horizontal and vertical. And I kind of like to trim it. Um, care for the excess paper. As far as these dots, ignore these dots. My printer has an issue and it produces these dots. Here we go, we have more or less a 24 inch elephant from this point to this point. It doesn't have to be dead on, in fact, let me verify that, where's my measuring tape? So from the front of the head to the back, there we go. We got our 24 inch elephant from this point to this point. And he turns out to be um, about 18 inches in height. That would be a pretty impressive elephant. Um, mine, the one I'm producing, I'm producing two of these here. There'll be two bulls battling it out, and they're close to this size here. So you can imagine two of these bulls in bronze. It's going to be a pretty big piece. Um, that piece has been commissioned by my buddy, and I love the piece so much. So I'm going to go ahead and. Um, uh, produce one for myself and that would probably be the end of that I will show you the next step on how to actually produce the armatures I'm converting a uh, horse armature I purchased from a uh, true form armatures I'm going to convert them into elephant armatures more on that later thank you for viewing